What's up guys, KS here. Thanks for joining me today as always. In 2018, Taurus released a series of handguns to the market, one of which is the growing in popularity subcompact striker-fired G2C. I have to say, after reviewing it last year, I was seriously impressed, and my outlook on Taurus is pretty high. The G2C set the stage for expectations that other offerings from Taurus would have to at least be on par with. Another offering for 2018 was the TH line of double-action, single-action handguns. The TH series shares some of the features of the G2C, which we'll cover in a moment, but drifts away from the standard striker-fired action that most manufacturers seem to be focusing on. I have to give credit to Taurus for doing that because there are a lot of people that still prefer the long first pull of a double action followed by the subsequent light crisp pulls of the single action. Because you guys have requested a review of the TH series, I couldn't refuse. They're affordable and easily attainable. I chose the TH9C simply because I enjoy the subcompact footprint and wanted to compare it to the G2C down the road. So now let's dive in and see if this Taurus lives up to expectations. All right, I've widened the camera a little bit. I want to give a couple of quick comparisons with this, one of which is the Glock 26, another very popular subcompact firearm. Now, keep in mind with the Glock 26, it does have a plus two factory base plate in it, uh, but I did that for a reason. In terms of capacity, this brings them a little bit closer uh, together, that TH9C at 13 rounds with its flat base magazine. But just kind of give you an idea of where these two guys sit. Now the TH9C is going to be about 25 ounces and the, and the Glock 26 I think is going to sit, I don't know, 21, 22 ounces. I don't have the specs in front of me right now. So that's where the uh, Glock 26 is. And one other one, because I talked about it so much in the intro, is actually the G2C. And these guys are pretty darn close. They really are in terms of size. Now one thing that's different, I'm going to kind of... Uh, pull these guys in beaver tail to beaver tail, and it's the same with the Glock 26. You'll notice that the slide on the G2C sits a little bit lower than that TH9 by not quite a half an inch, uh, but, uh, but a little bit under that, and the Glock even more so. That's actually gonna come into play here in just a moment, but again, just to give you an idea of where the TH9 sits. All right, before we walk around the TH9, let's go ahead and take a look at the magazines. Like I said, that's gonna be a 13 round flat base magazine, but the gun also comes with a 17 round magazine with a full extension on the grip. I like that feature. It is a sleeve, uh, but I like the fact that they carry the grip all the way down. So if you want that full size feel, this is definitely gonna do it. So it's nice that they have that option in there. Uh, whereas the G2C just came with the, the two flat magazines. So I think that's kind of a cool add on there. And you'll notice with the magazine, there's actually a little bit of a recess right there in case you have to clear any malfunctions. Another really nice touch. I like that, especially in a budget gun. The MSRP on this is going to be $359, so I definitely classify it as a budget-friendly option for sure. Now, as we move up the frame, there are a couple of things. The grip texture, and I, not I notated the same thing on the G2C. I love this grip texture. I think it's fantastic. First, I think the look of it is great. I love the fact that they've broken it up on the frame uh, and on the grip just to, to make it look a little bit more almost custom and it feels fantastic. Now I've been carrying the G2C for about three months or so and I've carried it up against body uh, without a t-shirt or anything like that and it's very comfortable. This is not going to rub you the wrong way. Um, it's uh, it's not going to beat up your clothes or anything like that. I mean it really is a very nice grip texture and there's some subtle finger grooves here as well that helps keep that gun a little bit more planted. And then we do have of course a little bit of a beaver tail up here as well and just a tiny bit of a cutout under the trigger guard. So in terms of ergo I mean, I really think they've done a pretty good job with this. I've been, been impressed with the way Taurus lays out their firearms. Now, as we start to get into controls, we look at our uh, magazine release. It is ambidextrous out of the box, so that's one less thing you have to worry about, especially if you're a left-handed shooter. A lot of times you have to swap things around. It's a whole different deal. You don't have to do that with the TH9C. However, that's where the ambidextrous qualities end. Your slide stop slide release is not gonna be ambidextrous and then it does have a thumb safety. I'll get back to that in a second, but once again, it is not ambidextrous out of the box. So, so you, you've got a little bit of flexibility there, but not full flexibility. So I mentioned that safety. I wanna come back to that because it definitely is a safety. So you can carry this cocked and locked, no doubt about it. However, it actually doubles 
as a decocker. I love that. I wish all double action single actions had at least a decocker, but the fact that this doubles as a safety, I think it's, I think it's really cool. I think it gives a little bit of flexibility with this firearm. Now, as we move up the frame, we do have our takedown levers, and I will take this down here in just a second, but they are on both sides, and they're very similar, not only to the G2C, but also a Glock, that sort of thing. So if you're used to that function, you're going to be able to fit right in with this without an issue at all. And then we do have a couple of reference points up a little bit further on the frame. I like that. Once again, it's a nice touch. Anytime budget-minded firearms can really include a lot of feature sets, I think that's just really cool. You get a lot of bang for your buck, pun intended. And then we do have an accessory rail for your tiny ninjas, chainsaws, lasers, all that good stuff. So you can hang certain accessories. I don't have anything actually in stock at all that uh, that can hang off of this. So you'll have to find some of your uh, smaller options. Uh, be sure to shout down in the comments below if you've already found something that works with this. I'd be curious myself. Uh, we don't have any texture in front of the trigger guard or anything, but there is a little bit of a swoop there. So if you like to if you like to shoot with uh, with that guard and your finger on the guard, I mean, you can definitely still do that. Not really a thing for me, but a lot of people do that. And then in terms of takedown, we'll go ahead and do that real quick. I'm actually going to uh, take the, can't the hammer down. It really doesn't matter on this one way or the other. All we need to do is pull our slide back about, oh, an eighth of an inch or so. And then we pull our tabs down and release the slide and it is good to go. So it's actually pretty effortless. They've done a good job with that. And we'll take all this stuff down for a moment or two. Just to give you an idea of the barrel, one thing I do want to point out with this, you'll notice, and keep in mind, I have 300 rounds through this, and none of these marks were on the barrel before I started shooting. It's not a big deal, guys, but uh, but I did notice that the wear on the barrel is actually a little bit more than I would have expected with that low of a round count. So, again, something to consider. And then we've got our guide rod and spring assembly, and it is metal, uh, which is kind of nice, uh, and it is captive. Some people really like the captive springs. I don't really care one way or the other, but uh, uh, but again, it's important to some people. And then we've got our slide, and it's pretty standard, kind of what you would expect, a little bit more of a recess there because it is hammer-fired, of course. But it's easy to do all of your maintenance and cleaning and that sort of thing, so not an issue there at all. And then a quick look at your frame as well. Pretty much what you would expect. Uh, it's Again, it's a pretty neat and tidy. Um, it cleaned up very well after the range session, so not a complaint there at all. Now, one thing... When we assemble this, you'll notice there is a little tab, this little guy right here. You want to make sure that it is down. I actually learned that the hard way when I was putting it back together after cleaning. That tab was up for whatever reason, and I couldn't get the gun back together, and I really thought I'd broken it. Um, and I, I, Guys, I've been around guns a long time. I, I, I really didn't expect to break something, but just make sure that that tab is down, and if it is, you'll be good to go. And then you get it back together, and everything is just fine. So guys, that's gonna be your frame and your takedown of the TH9C. All right, let's take a quick walk around the slide. And uh, just to give you kind of an idea, it's certainly a very matte finish, very similar to the G2C once again. I like the finish on this quite a bit. Um, it doesn't really grab fingerprints or anything like that. I think it's very tasteful. It does have the Taurus logo, and uh, then it also does have your TH9C 9x19 on the other side. But otherwise, it's plain Jane, and um, I think they've done a good job with this. Now, it does not have forward serrations or anything, but once again, it's actually pretty grippy up there. Um, so that hasn't been an issue at all. And, and real quickly, a point about the slide. Because it is double action, single action, the slide racking on this is exceptionally easy. So if you know somebody that has a hard time manipulating the slide on some firearms, this might actually be a pretty good option for them. So I just thought I'd throw that in there uh, in case you're curious. Now, in terms of the sights, we do have just a three white dot setup. Let me give you an idea there. They're going to be Novak rears. Now, they're dovetailed in on both sides, so they're uh, drift adjustable. If you're curious about that, we do have a little drift screw right there. Uh, but the, the sights are fine. Um, they're pretty narrow, and I did find, and it was very similar to the G2C, and I'll talk more about this in the shooting experience, but uh, but they're, they're, they're pretty small, and they were hard to pick up at the range. So, uh, so something to, again, consider. So there might be some aftermarket options you might want to consider for this, especially if you're going to be carrying it. So, uh, again, just... Just something to think about but uh, but that's your slide on the th9 by and large i think taurus has done a really good job laying this gun out i occasionally get feedback in the comments saying i'm nice to all guns and i never have anything bad to say i assure you that is not always the case the shooting experience with the th9c was okay why do i say okay 
when I ran through the first box of 115 grain PMC, my bulk ammo of choice, I noticed that picking up the sights was more chore than I prefer. You guys know I like to shoot on the faster side for these reviews, and I could tell at the range and in reviewing the footage that there was a lot of wobbling between shots, which was mostly me trying to get a decent sight picture. It's actually something I noticed with the G2C as well, but the ergos of that gun made up for the sight's shortcomings. I spent a fair amount of my 300 rounds with the TH9C trying to get settled with the ergos and find a comfortable and solid grip. For whatever reason, it just wasn't happening. There's also the trigger, which I'll cover in just a moment. Now keep in mind, guys, although the shooting expressions are extremely important in my reviews and how I gauge a gun, it doesn't mean that the next guy or gal that picks up the same gun won't shoot lights out with it. There's also the notion that we have good and bad days at the range, so although I was excited and in a great mood, it may just have not been my day. I do, however, usually find some common ground with the guns I'm testing within about 100 to 150 rounds, so this was out of the norm. That's significant to me. All right, let's take a quick look at the trigger. I made a mention of that in the shooting footage that we're gonna talk about the trigger just a little bit. Like I said before, it's double action, single action. Now that double action pull on this, which you would expect to be heavy, this one absolutely is. I mean, it's coming in well over 11 pounds. In fact, the gauge really had a hard time measuring it very accurately. So it's a heavy trigger, there's no doubt about it. Although I have to say, it's actually pretty smooth. I mean, it's heavy, there's no doubt. And you'll notice that it does have a half cock. Um, I'll do that again, just so you can see. So we'll do a half cock right there. So it does stage a little bit. That does help with that double action pull. So there's just a little bit less to get to, but you have to muscle your way through it a little bit. Again, it's not a big deal. It's double action, single action. That's what you would expect. But then in terms of the single action, and I measured this pretty consistently at about six and a half pounds, here's where things start to fall apart a little bit. Now you'll notice there's a long take up. That in and of itself doesn't bother me very much. It doesn't bother me on the G2C. It really doesn't bother me here, but the single action pull, about six and a half pounds, uh, very consistently on the gauge, that I'm not impressed with. Um, I actually would like a lighter uh, single action pull. I'd really like for this to be coming more kind of four and a half pounds. I think that'd be nice. Plus, believe it or not, it's actually, it's a little bit clunky as you move through the trigger. Now, it was consistent, I'll give it that, but it was a little bit clunky. Now, your reset is right there. And I'm gonna do that again because you may not have heard it. And then we get to our pull. I'm gonna do this as slow as I can. There and there. There are two little snaps um, and I don't really understand what that's for. It didn't make a difference on the range. That wasn't a big deal. But if you're shooting to reset, you need to make sure, and I'm gonna do this one more time, you need to make sure that you're really shooting to the actual reset. So. Two. You, you probably heard that. There are two distinct snaps there. And uh, guys, again, at the end of the day, uh, the, the reset, it's really not that big of a deal. And it's actually relatively short, which I can appreciate. But the, the single action pull itself, the break itself, I, I've been a little bit disappointed. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel refined. It doesn't feel very clean to me. And I'm being a little bit over picky, I realize. But uh, but when I think about single action uh, triggers, I mean, I just, I want something perhaps a little bit more than what this is offering me. So guys, here we are at the end. And I don't want you to think it's all doom and gloom because it absolutely is not. There's a lot about the TH9C that I like. I like the grip texture quite a bit. I like the safety D cocker combo. I like the easy racking slide. I mean, there are definitely some good things. The overall form size or form factor with the subcompact and the 13 rounds plus the 17 round backup magazine, that's all fantastic. But I think there were a couple of misses, some of which might be because of me and some of which I think are because of the gun. I was pretty disappointed in the trigger. I thought the trigger could be better, especially the single action. The double action was what it is. And that's, that's perfectly fine. I could never really get a very comfortable grip on it, which seemed odd. I was very surprised about that, but it just never was as comfortable as I would have liked it to have been on the range. So again, that's probably a me issue. So I'll be taking it back to the range several more times to see if maybe my thoughts uh, will change on that as it often does. So, um, you know, it is what it is, but, uh, but overall I'm really excited with what Taurus has been doing. And I think they're coming along and putting out some pretty good products um, at a reasonable, a reasonable price. Again, 
This coming in at $359 MSRP and your street price is gonna be significantly lower than that. That is excellent. That means more people can get gun in hand and start training. That's fantastic. So guys, I'm really excited to read your comments down below and to see what you guys have to say about this, if you agree or disagree, and what your experience is with the TH9 or TH9CR. Really looking forward to that. Otherwise, thanks for joining me and I will see you next time.